Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar on what's new in Advanced Deal 2021. My name is Alec Giles. I'm a structures consultant at Greatec UK. I originally trained as a mechanical design engineer around 30 years ago and spent 10 years designing machinery for the steel and aluminium industries. And then I moved into becoming the CAD manager for that company, looking after all the users, providing training and support to all the users there for about 10 years. And then I've come to Greytech uh, 10 years ago. Since then, I've been focused 100% purely on advanced steel. So I've got about 20 years experience doing consultancy and support on CAD. Why should you use Greytech as your business partner? Well, we are unique in the industry as being able to offer you support and products to help you throughout the entire life cycle of your own products. First of all, we break that into four business areas, and the first one is create. So we create your designs using Autodesk software, and that is enhanced with Greytech Power Packs. We have Power Packs which add extra functionality and tools to Inventor, Vault, Revit, or Advanced Steel. Once you've got your basic design, you need to check it's going to really work. So you can do all the stress analysis using the state-of-the-art Greytech simulation tools in the Greytech Simulate business line. These tools can tell you whether they pass EC3 standards or other standards uh, to make sure they're really going to function in the real world. Once you've got that finished design, you need to manufacture it. So you move into Greytech Fabricate, and we have uh, facilities there to help manage your entire workshop. And that means managing anything from scheduling the throughput of the workshop, managing the staff, to producing the NC files to feed to different NC machines and translating or interpreting those files differently for different machines. And all of that work creates a lot of data flying around your company. So to help control all that data, we have Greatech Manage, where we have products to control all your work in progress data, protecting all your intellectual property, make sure everyone's using the right versions of the right data, and it controls everything right up to the point where it goes outside your company to some third-party data environment. This webinar is uh, one of a series of webinars. As always, we're doing them regularly. Uh, you may have missed the first one or two. Um, these are the appointments for the current series, and any you've missed will always be available if you uh, want to look at recordings. But if you want to register for future ones, click on the link here to uh, look up any future upcoming webinars, keep an eye on that page and register for the ones you're interested in. This presentation is available as a PDF if you look at the handout section of the GoToWebinar interface. If you download that PDF, all these links will be live. If you've missed any of our previous webinars, then they're all available for videos on the Advanced Hill content portal. This particular one will appear sometime in the next 10 days. Uh, on that portal. All the webinars get posted up there as soon as we can after the webinar. Do you see our Advanced Deal blogs? We're constantly putting up hints and tips and extra information, ideas for people on our Great Tech UK blog page. So keep an eye on that as well. Lots and lots of information there and subscribe to that so you get informed of any new postings. We recently had the BIMUP Global Conference at the start of June, and we had one last year as well. This is over 200 presentations in nine different languages covering the whole world and lots of different products. At least 28 of those presentations this year were for Advanced Deal, and all of those are recorded and available. If you're a Greatech customer, you can log into your Greatech Advantage site, go to greatech.com, look for the Advantage link at the top right, log in, and you can watch the videos of any of those presentations from the BIMUP Conference. And also, if you're a Greater UK customer, then you are entitled to have the power packs I alluded to a second ago. So if you haven't got it yet, make sure you obtain the power pack. It's lots of useful tools, um, which will help you be more productive. If you're not in the UK, talk to your local Greater office to see what you're entitled to and see if you can get the maximum benefits. So we're coming on to what's new in Advanced Deal 2021. Before we go any further, Let's just find out which version you're all using. So I've got a quick poll here. If you can all just answer that question, click on the dot, tell me which version you're using. It'll be interesting to see what range we have.
Okay, two thirds of your answered, one third is not quite there yet, so I'll give you a couple more moments. That's almost everyone. Is there one or two that still haven't answered? Okay, that's long enough. It looks like one person hasn't answered. So we can look at the results there. Uh, one or two of you are using older than 2018. 2018 is the oldest supported version from Autodesk. Autodesk support the current version and three versions before. You ask me this question about anything older than 2018 and basically it's just our best guess. Um, you're not really fully supported anymore, so you really, really are well overdue for updating. Uh, most of you are on 2019, it seems, so you've skipped 20. Well, I'd recommend you do upgrade to 21. Um, there's no reason not to. There's not going to shock you or be radically different. It's very stable, so there's no reason to say you're losing out by upgrading. Finish the projects you've started in your current version, but then upgrade and start any new projects in the new version. Thanks for your answers there. Let's move on to what is new then in 2021. Well, they've split the uh, uh, features or new things into several areas. So modeling tools, they've changed the way you can stretch beams. So now it's possible to lock that, when you're stretching a beam, to lock it to the system line so it doesn't change direction. You can use the extension snap to uh, align with things when you're using the stretching of a beam using grips. Uh, there's a new uh, results when you do use a section of define user section there's a new way for doing the results I'm going to demo all these later just a summary um, so the new way of seeing those results much clearer helps you find errors uh, bolts can be switched into holes holes can be switched into anchors anchors back to holes so if you place the wrong one it's nice that you can now easily switch between bolts anchors and holes you can have the monorails um, railing, you may have found that in previous releases, that's been enhanced a bit, but there's a new version called Panelized, which will make separate sex, set length portions of rail. Dynamo, the programming extension, has been enhanced and updated for 2021. And then we go into the, some documentation or drawing improvements. You can check now in the searches for which parts have drawings or not from your model, so you can know which parts. Um, you need to continue drawing. It's now possible to say you can ignore holes on an object when you do numbering. I'll explain what that does a bit better later on. The weld symbols, you can now manage the lead lines coming from a weld symbol. You can add extra ones or take out lead lines. And you can combine weld symbols for different parts together or not as you wish. Um, and if you do multi-sheet drawings, I know many people prefer not to, most UK customers do not do multi-sheet, but if you do use multi-sheet tokens then you can got different or new options for how you sort the parts, uh, which order they're drawn in on those multi-sheets. In terms of interoperability, they've updated the uh, Advanced Steel extension for Revit, so Advanced Steel 2021 and Revit 2021 can share that SMLX file. Uh, they've changed the way the SQL Server support works, so that if you're uh, really feeling gung-ho and trying to put your net servers on a network then it's possible to use different tools now or better tools you can also uh, in localization there seems to be something they say it's just for the uk i don't know why they say it's just for the uk but we've now got the facility to use different section arrows on gas to what we use on assembly drawings and of course there's always a huge list of bug fixes little tiny improvements and errors in the code um, the descriptions in the What's New documents usually don't mean very much, but at least four or five of those were definitely things the UK bugs that encountered. Um, and there'll be other things, the stability, uh, things about dimensions moving on updates, all that sort of thing. They're constantly working on all that in the background. So let's look at this in more detail then. So starting with the modelling tools, what's changed? Well, the first change is they can stretch a beam now along its system line. So when you select a beam you get the grips up either end and you've always been able to pick up the grip and move it but now if you hover over that grip you get the lengthen option and when you do that you're locking onto the system line of that beam so 
now whenever you move even if you're not accurate with your dragging it will only extend along its own system line whether that's straight or curved so that's quite handy stops you accidentally moving or changing the direction of the beam you just want to make it a bit longer in its own axis and to go with that the extension object snap works on beams the extension means you can project where a beam would go beyond its own end and you can line up for those points as well so that makes it much easier to align things so let's switch to uh, advanced steel and play with that so I've got some random beams here nothing very exotic but uh, if I just pick that beam up normally if I grab the grip on the end and I move around I can go anywhere and I've changed the direction don't want to do that so now if I go there hover over the end you see it's got this lengthen command so if I move and click on lengthen now as I move around it's not going everywhere it's only lengthening in its own length or in its own axis same with the curve beam there I can hover over the grip click on lengthen and it will only go in its own curve it's not going to go all over the place not changing radius or anything like that the extension idea if I come down the bottom here let's make sure extension is turned on yes it is make sure tracking is turned on if I click on that beam and I don't I'm not going to click on the lengthen so at the moment it could go anywhere but if I hover over that point there so I can go back and hover over it now it's telling me when I'm in line I can still go anywhere I like but it tells me extension when I'm in line and I can also hover over the end of this beam and it tells me when I'm in line of that beam so if I go now to when it says I'm in both little dotted lines are showing click I'm now in line stayed within the axis of that beam and I'm in line with that beam I can do the same on the curved one click and it's telling me I'm in on the extension so I'm staying in the same curve and again I can hover over the end of that beam to find the curve there and that's it click so I'm in line with that beam the ends are in line and I've stayed within the curve or the direction of the original beam so I haven't accidentally just moved them to a completely different radius or angle so that might be helpful for when you're editing quicker way to do the editing keeps you under control so that's going to make it easier to change a beam's length without changing its direction next up we have the what they're calling a messaging framework or basically new results pane when you're doing user sections it used to be that you just got to say failed or successful but not much else but now we're using the results pane similar to the clash check results pane to uh, give you information and if there are errors it will tell you about the errors and you can double click on that to find the problem so again let's have a quick look in advanced deal how that could work so I'll switch to 2d wire frame uh, let's go to top view here we go I've got a user section I've defined here so I say I want to go to extended modeling generate that section and it's failed and it tells me instead of coming up with a useless box to say error it's coming up saying simple outer contour not closed so my outer side shape got a hole or a gap in it somewhere but I thought it was all right what's wrong so I can double click on it it zooms in and puts a circle around oh okay now I can see the gap so I can have a look in there yeah that's not quite what I intended so I could move that actually let's move the other one I move that to the end of there so now I've closed up the gap clear marked objects and I can try that again so generate that it's successfully created it but it is warning me there's middle left axis defined and it's ignored one of them so I haven't oh yeah look I've got two of them there so I didn't really mean that one get rid of that and then I can again clear marked objects and generate it again successfully created it's called letters and monogram so we're happy so much easier to diagnose any problems if you're having to do, generate your own user sections and you're having issues there much better report so you can create your user sections much more easily now this is uh, quite a nice one um, they've now made it possible to switch your bolts anchors and holes from one to the other um, easily if you need to because before you had to delete them and draw create a brand new pattern 
changing the switch first. So again, let's have a quick look. So let's go back to our realistic. Here we go. On the bottom of my stair, I've got some uh, bolts here for that base plate, but this goes into concrete. I can't use bolts into concrete, that was a mistake. So I can select them, I can right click and say change into holes. And there you go, they're now just empty holes. I don't really want empty holes either, so I can select the empty holes, right click and say change into, I can either change to bolts or to anchors. So I can choose anchors and now I have anchors, so I could choose my Hilti anchor I want and everyone's happy. So bolts or anchors can be changed into holes, holes can be changed into bolts or anchors. So you can switch between the three at will without having to remodel the parts. Simple but effective. So that's nice if you have to uh, change what you've used in any given situation. And the next one is this mono wheels round rail. So as you can see in the picture, this is a ball post type railing. And instead of having one long length of railing, the new panelized version of mono wheels, mono wheels have been in the system for a couple of years now, but the new panelized version, instead of putting one long length in, we'll put in lengths of fixed standalone portions like this. And you can control the length of the panels, the clearance gap between the panels, and all the typical sort of properties within the panels. So I'll have a very quick look at that. Here's a few beams here. Let's put some railings on. So it's on the fly out here. You've got the normal railing, then you've got the continuous mono reels, and then you've got mono reels panelized as this new button. So I'll pick the beams. I'll start here and there. And it's put on some ball post railing. And you see there, instead of one long length, it's put three separate panels or standalone units along this long edge. And you can come down here and you can have a look in the different sections. So it's the second segments. I could change the length there to make them four meters each, maximum length. And let's change that to just two standalone panels now, with three posts in each panel. So you can control this quite easily. Um, to get these freestanding individual panels, uh, which might be convenient, especially if it's something that needs to be flexible. Then on that side, they could take away one panel on special events and put them back at other times, whatever they need to do. So that will help you create these monorails panels more easily. But look, monorail says TM, it's a trademark. Monorails is an Australian supplier of ball post railing. It's all buried deep in databases and we have not yet found how to change that to use any other supplier other than this Australian one supplier. The whole macro is built around this one Australian supplier by uh, an expert in Australia. So maybe one day we're about to adjust it but at the moment it's only doing Australian sections. Whether that can be used good enough for you or not I don't know. That's a, at the moment, it's only this one supplier's worth of beams or posts. Dynamo. Dynamo has been updated to work with Advanced Steel 21. It's not really a new or enhanced feature. It doesn't do any different to what it did in 2020, but it has to be updated each year to work with the latest version, and they have done that. But what if you're not familiar with Dynamo? What's it all about? Well, <coughs> excuse me. So basically, a visual. Uh, programming environment, a bit like a flow chart, and you can rapidly generate patterns of complicated structures. So I can quickly show you how that works. I'm going to start a new file. And I'm going to go along and find the Dynamo add-in. It's a separate download from your account using the Autodesk Desktop app. You should be able to download and install it. So here's Dynamo. I'll just load one of their ready-made examples. So I'm going to load the uh, circular tower. So here we go. You can see here like a flow chart. This is the program. And if you have a look in here, you can see each thing's got sort of creates some points, feeds the points into this one, and that one feeds the circles into this one and over there. And they've all got these different links going between the different parts. If I click run.
There you go, it's just created using I beams. Some kind of huge tower. Complicated model. And in here you got input sections, you can highlight different areas. Here's different background colours, so this is the bit that creates the horizontal beams, that bit creates the bracings. But over on the left usually you find your input areas. So I could say the tower needs to be only 30 metres high. Uh, and you want eight rings. The bottom radius is going to be a bit wider, that's 12. And the top radius is going to be, I must make it seven and a half metres. So I've changed the inputs and click run again. Click in the model and there you go, it's just updated to those new sizes, shorter, wider and so on. <clears throat> It's quite limited on the functionality, you can do you can go straight beams, curved beams or plates. And you can only control the section of the beam, not much else. But it's a quick way to get a lot of data for these um, patterns of different beams that you might need. You can write your own programs of course, you just do it by dragging and dropping different commands from the side here. Drag them in, feed the, join the dots to make it work. So it's much less programming information required or programming knowledge required, but you still need a little bit of understanding of how the basic programming works. <clears throat> and you could write this, if you have anything where you need lots of iterations, it would be a great way to experiment lots of different iterations quickly. Uh, once we've got the program, I could try 20 different versions of that tower to see which one I like in just two or three minutes. So that's Dynamo for you. That now works correctly with Advanced Tower 21. So complicated regular structures can be modelled. That's the modelling side. They've split the next portion into documentation, although some of it comes into the model really. First up, we have this ability now to search for parts that have drawings or don't have drawings. Basically, it's a new option within the search filter dialog box. So as a <coughs> result of the search, you can either show the results in red or you can put it to your Project Explorer and use the light bulb to isolate those parts. So having a quick look in here, let's look at a different model. This model should be familiar to most of you, certainly if you've been trained in the UK you'll recognise this. Um, which parts have I drawn, which parts haven't I drawn? Well if I go to search filter, I could search for objects, I want to search for, well, not really concrete, all the steel type objects. I'll do, and I need to search, so it's on the behaviour tab, I want to search for has a single part drawing. If I leave that blank, then it has not got a single part drawing, so it's got no drawing, and I'll save that, no part drawing. So if I say OK, things turn red. Or if you don't want to do that, having saved it, it's now in the Project Explorer. So if I click on the light bulb, it isolates the parts, I have no drawing. So that's been in the power pack, we had that in the power pack uh, last year. Check MP, check SP, that would highlight the parts with no drawings. But now you can search for it in core product. Using that extra options, has or has not got assembly drawings or part drawings. So it makes it easier to track which parts have or haven't got the drawings. The next one up, <clears throat> ignore holes for numbering. This one struck us as a little bit odd and we've all had to scratch our heads a bit as to why they've done this. Um, but it's now possible in most, or pretty much any kind of object, to say you want to ignore the holes in that object for numbering. Or if you don't want to do it for the whole object, you could actually select a certain group of holes and say these holes do not affect numbering because they've got the used for numbering there as well. Um, what's that all about? Surely the holes are always critical. You've got the holes in different positions, you have to have a different part. Well, try and give you an example. What I've got here, I've got some 
user sections, their Unistrat sections, or they could be Dexian sections. Typically, these have a loads and loads of slots in the bottom. They're not really solid like that. Every you know, one inch or no, 30 mil slot, five mil solid, 30 mil slot, five mil solid, all the way along. So basically, one long slots on the bottom, so you can put the bolts anywhere you like. And the same on the top, I've got perforated sheet, FH bundle, square mesh, perforated sheet. So there's holes everywhere on that. So although I've got bolts in there, I've put on tapered uh, countersunk screws, it doesn't really matter exactly where they are because I'll just put them through one of the existing holes into the slot, into the Dexian, and the slots can be anywhere. I've got a slightly different hole pattern in this run to that one. Find number at the moment. So I'll select that lot and number them. I get five different objects. I've got two different gratings and three types of beam. But actually, like I say, I don't really care. I know I'm just going to find an existing hole in both parts to put the bolt through. So I'm going to select those again. And in the beams, I'm going to say behavior, remove that tick, use holes for numberings, because I'm just going to use the slots that already exist in the beam. I'm not going to bother modeling those slots. That would take forever. But I'm just going to use the slots I know already exist. And same for the gratings. I'm just going to find an available hole, because it says mesh anyway, and stick my box through there. So I'm not going to care where the holes are on that either. I'll find an existing hole somewhere that lines up. So now if I number the same parts, I only get two types of beam. So the two diagonal beams are now considered identical, even though they've got different bolt patterns in them. And the two bits of grating are considered identical, even though they have different bolt patterns in them. So when you've got things like this, where you've got lots of holes already pre-existing and you're not really wanting to model all these dozens of existing holes, you can just use this option to say these holes are not too important to the part detail. It's not the machining I'm actually going to do. I'm just going to take them for granted. So that's why you've got this new option to whether or not to basically turn off use holes for numbering. Everything's turned on, <clears throat> so it's all as it was before, unless you go in and specifically on the behavior page turn off use holes for numbering because you have this kind of situation. <clears throat> so you can get more accurate numbering where you've got this kind of part with lots of lots of existing holes in them. <clears throat> the weld symbol. It's quite common that uh, you get lots of weld symbols on your drawings and they can easily become quite messy. So they've got new facility now. It only applies to weld symbols at the moment. I don't know what the plans are for the future. But you can now add or remove individual leader lines from every weld symbol. So that can give you a chance to tidy up a lot. And to go with that, you can also have a new option in the defaults, whether to combine the weld symbols if they're different parts. So these are two different stiffeners in the picture here. So it's giving you two separate weld symbols. But you could um, change that option, and those would all be combined onto one needle eye, whatever one you think gives you the neater result. So let me try and show you that. Come along, a simple bit of railing here. I'm just going to draw that. And it's not done it right, it's better number the whole model then. Try that again. Oh dear, demoitis. Come on, draw that railing. What's that doing as the main part? All right, try again. better. Always goes wrong in a demo. So if I have a look at that drawing, here we go. So 
So we've got these weld symbols. I've got one, two, three, four, because there's three different positions, four different positions, hasn't combined them. And over here, I've got one, one, two, three, four. So what I could do, I could say, well, I don't want those separate. But maybe I could delete that one and delete that one. Let's move these labels out of the way. And I can click on that weld and right click. I have this new option, add lead line. So I can say add lead line, I just point to the point and it looks, put it on the extra lead line. Same, right click that one and then select that one, right click, add lead line, point there. And let's put it on for me, right click to finish. So now I've got the two lead lines and that's probably neater than it was a second ago. Or if you decide you've got too many lead lines, I don't want that one there, I can right click and say remove lead line select the one I want to get rid of and it's taking it away. So that's really quite easy, select the symbol, add or remove lead line and select what you want to add or remove. Quite nice, helps you tidy those up a lot. Look on the left hand side here, you can see we've got uh, these four separate ones here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to management tools and defaults. And I'm going to look for weld Let's try and find the right one. Under drawing general, weld symbols combine only if the weld point connects to the same object. <clears throat> At the moment it's ticked, which is the default. That's what it's going to be like when you install. But if I remove that tick and I come into advanced deal, update defaults. All right, and now I update the detail. You can see it's decided to now combine. So that one, instead of having three separate symbols, one, two, three, I've now got four even. It's got four arrows on the one symbol. And that one, instead of two separate symbols, it's now got combined those two into one symbol. So you have less symbols with more arrows if you untick that option. So it's up to you whether you prefer it on, so you get each symbol only deals with one part, or you'll have it off so that uh, it combines as many as it can into single symbols. Okay, so it helps you uh, clean up your weld symbols on your drawings. If you do multi-sheet drawings, then when you're creating the drawings, you have the choices. You've always been able to say uh, beams in order of length or plates in order of thickness or in order of part number. You've now got extra options in that list. You can do them in order of coating, in order of lot or phase or in sequence of material or the part name. So you've got some other options you can play with there if you do multi-sheet drawings. If you don't do multi-sheet drawings, like in the UK, we've got single sheet drawings which are named after the part number. It makes no difference what order you created them in, the drawing gets the same name anyway. So the sort order is pretty much irrelevant for 99% of people in the UK. But uh, if you do do multi-sheet drawings and you want to try and keep them in some kind of recognizable sequence, that could be handy for you. Interoperability, in other words, talking to other people. As we've said, they've updated the advanced deal extension for Revit. So it doesn't do any more or less than it did last year, but it has to be updated and re rebuilt each year to suit the next latest versions. So again, you can f transfer that SMLX file in and out of Revit. So it's not an advanced deal thing as such, it's a Revit plugin, the advanced deal extension for Revit. They have to download it and uh, install it. But that lets them import your advanced deal models from using the SMLX file. And SMLX, if you've seen any of our presentations about talking between the programs, it's vastly better than any other format you could possibly use for exchange between the two programs by a huge margin. It gets the intelligent beams, it even gets the intelligent joints that you can edit in Revit, the same as you can edit in advanced deal. So you get better communication as long as you have the right tool. Localization. I don't know who asked for this. They've suddenly done this. What they say they've done this for the UK. I don't know if it's available in other countries. I don't look at their builds or whether it's been there before and not in the UK. I don't know. But there's now options in the management tools. And if you have a look in there, you've always had this option. You can have the cut view symbol, or in other words, a sectional arrow. 
you can have it for um, assembly drawings or for weld preparations, you can have a different one. Well, now you've got another option to have a different one on the GA as well. So let's have a look. If I go to a simple rafter drawing, a similar, an existing assembly, here's a rafter. I can use the create cut view symbol here, uh, command. So I'll cut that and I'll cut straight down there, looking that way. There you go, it's used that type of section arrow. There's my section AA. But this is the section arrow I've got. Big wide arrowhead. That's fine. But if I look at the GA drawing, let's go for the mezzanine plan. Here's my mezzanine plan. I want to do a section through that. So I'm going to go for create cut view. I'm going to choose, right before I do that, I'm going to go for settings because I need to select this one to 50. I'm going to choose this view and I'm going to cut, let's say, from there down to there. I'm going to look, oh, didn't take the first one, okay, to there. I'm going to go to the left a bit, that deep. So it creates a section view. There's my view, but look, we've got completely different arrows now. So we've got a thick line and the hook there. And at the top, we've got one of these type of symbols. which are quite popular, circle with the arrow. So you can do anything you like. These are just drawings. The drawings already exist on disk. You go to your program data, Autodesk Advanced Tool 2021, GBR, shared, support, symbols. That's where all these different blocks and symbols things appear. Then look in there for cut symbol. You've got cut symbol, general, and then you got, have I turn on the previews? That's a generic one. You can have a different one for top and bottom. So you've got cut symbol up and down. Then you've got a new file in there, cut symbol GA up and down. So if I look at that, that's the original one. That's my new one. That's the original one. That's my new one. So you can just open the original. I would copy it always, so you can always go back. But then you can copy that existing one and play about with it. The name is the, I guess, replaced with the right call out letter. We can draw any geometry around that you want to make your own symbols up if you like. So gives you again, improves the uh, representation and presentation of the drawings for you. Other improvements they've managed to create. They've messed about with the SQL Server a bit. Um, SQL Server is a lot more complicated than the old access that they used, but it's more stable and more powerful. So we've been using that for, since 2018 now. It used to be uh, known in one name inside the system, and now it's known as a different name, so it's got, separates the versions out a bit better. Inside, that's a bit technical. But also, if you ever wanted to try and share a database on the network, still not something we recommend. Um, well, they're trying to make improvements to it. That's why they've got to make improvements. It's very difficult to get it stable. But with SQL, you need a full-blown SQL server somewhere on your server network, which is a lot more effort. It's not just a case of copying a few files. <clears throat> it's a full SQL server in installation. And SQL server, you can have a whole career being a SQL server expert. But now it's possible to use different versions of SQL server, the enterprise, the standard, or SQL server express, instead of just the one version it had to be before, which was a bit of a basic cut-down one. And big companies trying to do this kind of thing didn't like having that um, junior version on their system. They wanted the full professional system to go with other bits on their network. So they have more power and flexibility there now. So that's all the new features for 21. But we'd like to keep reminding people uh, we can help you get the most out of these things. 
most of you have probably done some kind of basic training, but basic training shouldn't be considered the end of your journey. Really, basic training is the start of your journey with advanced steel. It's like passing your driving test. You're kind of safe to be let loose on your own, but you're certainly not going to win any Formula One races anytime soon. You need to learn a lot more skills, a lot more um, refinement and practices and things. It's the same with advanced steel. We can, you know, installing it out of the box and getting the basic training is only a start. We can help you implement it accurately for your company, set up all the options and settings and um, basic layouts of the system to get it running and installations and so on. We can then start looking at customization, so changing those weld symbols, creating some extra bolts, creating custom drawing styles and things like that. And that comes under three and four for databases and drawing styles and so on. Extra date, uh, beam sizes, custom connections, all sorts of things. And we can help you control and organize that between multiple users in your company, possibly using batch files to copy the data around. We prefer the option of batch files than trying to install the server networks because that's far more expensive and difficult to do. Batch files keep it easy and simple. So there's great tech can help you with all of this to get the best out of your system. Don't just stop at the basic training. You're only scratching the surface of what Advanced Hill can do. You can benefit a lot more if you look at these other steps and hone and refine what you're getting, tailor it to your company, optimize it for your systems and preferences. So that's uh, that's the end of my bit. Now it's your turn if you have any questions. Again, don't forget to download the handout from the uh, panel on the right. You can use the links there then to click live and get to all these different recordings and so on. If anybody has any questions, I'll give you a few moments to type them in and try to answer them. So there's a question panel on the right if you'd like to enter anything. Somebody had a hand up there briefly, it appeared and disappeared again. If you have a question, uh, you can raise your hand again or preferably type in your question. Mark Rushton, yes, Mark. Can you type it in into the question panel? No, maybe not. Okay, Mark, perhaps you want to send the question to support and uh, we'll answer it for you on support. Oh, something's appeared. Just barely read that. Let me see if I can get that to show. Can you adjust the height of the monorails? Yes. Let's see if I can find it in there. Oh, well, uh, actually, I shouldn't assume yes. I should check. It's probably down to the height of the posts and they are... Um, Predefined special parts. So being predefined, I'm not so sure you can change the height. If you, I think if you change the, the special part, you could do something about it. Because you see here, you're just choosing a ready-made post off of a list. So you would need to somehow define the new special part and enter in the database uh, what the model file is and what the dimensions and everything needed for that is. But I couldn't point you at any of those database tables at this time. I know they're in there somewhere. I haven't. Um, got any instructions on how to do any of that? It's not post published. It's something we'd have to reverse engineer. I wouldn't get overly excited about the monorails for that reason. It's not flexible or dynamic. It's all in the, like I say, hidden in the databases and not published how to edit any of that. You have to reverse engineer, although it is possible. Um, you're better off getting the power pack and using the ball post railing from the Grey Tech Power Pack Premium. That's got a lot more abilities. You can easily add any special parts you want using the special part manager. And it can go uphill, round corners, um, all sorts of, all the options you would expect from a powerful railing macro, much, much more powerful than the monorails. And you can use custom ones defined on the fly for the posts as well if you wish to. There is a problem with the model browser in 2021. It doesn't sort into order. Autodesk are aware of it and we'll fix it one day. So if we go to assemblies, that's not the order you expect things to be in. And there's nothing you can do about that. It's not a user error. It's not um, 
easy just to click on something to sort. It still gives the right information, so I can still find the heading for assembly N5, and it will still highlight all the parts for N5, <coughs> whichever one that is, the expert beam there. But uh, it's just not in order you re recognize. Like I say, Autodesk are well aware of it, and hopefully it'll be fixed in whenever they reduce it, release a patch of some kind. Okay, that seems to be all the questions. So thank you very much for your attention, everybody. We'll leave it there then and finish our presentation today. Thanks very much.